If you're looking to improve at Rocket League, learning how to aerial is a fundamental mechanic you need to be focusing on. Aerials are an essential part of high level Rocket League gameplay. The sooner you dedicate the time to learning aerial control, the faster you will rank up in the game. But remember, it will take many hours of practice to see the results you want, so stick to it. Hey, I'm Jack. I've been a Rocket League player since 2016 and I've amassed over 5,000 hours into the game. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to improve your aerial control in Rocket League. I'll show you two different types of aerials you can learn and some training tips to help you on your way to improving your aerial control. Let's get into them. Let's first break a basic aerial down into three parts. You first got the jump, second is the tilt, and finally, the boosting, and that's really it. When you're first going for an aerial, you'll probably look like a newborn bird, and it may not look as controlled as what you're seeing on my screen now. A useful tip when I first started aerialing in Rocket League was to hold down my analog stick before jumping when I aerialed. That way you're kind of combining part one and part two of an aerial together. It's also gonna take a while for you to develop your aerial control. Now, while it's relatively simple to pick up the gist of learning how to aerial in Rocket League, what we're looking for though is control when we do decide to aerial. As every finite move movement you make in Rocket League will have a dramatic impact on how you one, position your car and two, how you hit the ball. Also, as you start to climb the ranks in Rocket League, shot placement and power with your aerials are really important to succeeding. So, how do you control an aerial? Well, there are three different ways in which you can control an aerial. The first is boosting whether you hold it down flat or if you feather your boost. The second is using your analog stick to maneuver your car. And the third is using air roll and or directional air roll for further control and precision when moving your car in the air. Now, learning to control these three components of an aerial are going to take time. A lot of controls in Rocket League are based on the feel of it. So consistent practice will help you out in the long run. Now, it probably sounds weird when I say Rocket League controls are based on the feel of it. Now, remember, Rocket League is a physics-based game. Take the jumping mechanic, for example. If you quickly press your button you'll notice a small jump however if you hold that button down you'll notice you jump a little higher than normal now let's get back to controlling those aerials there are some key components to look for to know that you're controlling your aerials correctly that includes efficient boost management so knowing when to feather your boost and when to hold it down when aerialing next is smooth movement this includes having a takeoff angle that allows you to hit the ball correctly and moving in one smooth motion no flailing or doing weird loop to loops and finally precise air roll movements used with purpose so no freestyling around here but using air roll to position your car to either hit the ball in a certain way or to position your car for the quickest recovery once hitting the wall or the floor. Now, let's get into the second type of aerial and the most commonly used type, the fast aerial. As the name suggests, fast aerials are the quickest way to get in the air when you're either trying to beat your opponent to the ball or trying to score. Fast aerials also feature almost entirely throughout high level gameplay as well. So you're best to learn it as soon as possible. As you'd expect, a fast aerial incorporates a lot of the inputs of a basic aerial. So let's break them down in order. First is boosting before you aerial. The second is to jump and tilt your car backwards at the same time until the nose of your car points towards the roof or where you're aiming to hit the ball. A tip is to hold your analog stick back before jumping to make the action almost instant. And finally, using your second jump. Remember to only use your second jump once the nose of your car is facing directly up. This second jump propels you forward faster than a basic aerial would using only the single jump. Here are some common questions I see when it comes to aerial control. I keep flipping backwards, how can I fix this? The first option is to ensure you let go of your analog stick before using your second jump as this is the input causing you to backflip. If you still seem to be getting stuck though, I'd recommend increasing your dodge dead zone. Are different cars better at aerials? Honestly, no car is the best at doing aerials in this game. It's a matter of personal preference. I'm a basic person that uses the octane. Do you need to spin when going for an aerial? Not always. If you look at people on the field, most are spinning during their aerials to position their car to hit the ball in a certain way. But for example, if you're trying to beat someone to the ball, you want to be getting there first. So it's ideal to fly directly to the ball without spinning as you may lose momentum and speed. How do I jump and boost at the same time? This is a common problem people that are new to Rocket League face. What I did was change the binding of my boost button to R1, allow me to press jump, which was my X button and boost at the same time when playing. Again, it's a personal preference though. I just find this is easier for me to manage pushing two buttons simultaneously. Feel free to comment any questions you have about aerial control in the comment section below. I'll be sure to answer them. Okay, so we've learned how to do the basic aerial as well as the fast aerial. Let's get you some training tips to help you master aerial control. I would first recommend that you change some bindings around. If you're using a PlayStation controller, I'd recommend having your air roll button bound to L1 and then having at least one directional air roll button on either square 
or circle. I personally have arrow left bound to square and arrow right bound to circle. Now, more often than not, I use the main arrow button as well as the arrow left in combination. However, from time to time, we'll use arrow right. I'm just not too confident with arrow right at the moment, but stay tuned for a future video where I train arrow right for a week. Now, I want you to spend 10 minutes aerialing from goalpost to goalpost whilst feathering your boost. If you turn off your boost in free play, you'll notice if you hold down your boost trying to fly from goalpost to goalpost, you actually won't make it. However, if you do so by feathering your boost, you'll actually make it across to the other goalpost and with some boost left over. The next part of the training is to add in a directional spin to your aerials. Travel from goalpost to goalpost spinning in one direction and then travel back spinning in the other direction. A key tip when doing these first two training exercises is to try and hit the crossbar every time you fly across the field. Challenge yourself by next spinning both right and left. You'll start to identify spots during your air roll that feel really awkward. This is what you want to see as this is where you need to be focusing on during your aerial control training. For me, using air roll left feels a lot more natural than it does trying to use air roll right. However, acknowledge that this is one thing that I need to work on in order to improve my gameplay and aerial control as a whole. I suggest spending at least 10 minutes trying to do this aerial control training. I mean, it's literally only three exercises going from goalpost to goalpost while adding in more challenges as you go on. Do this before you head into your competitive games and I promise you'll start to notice an improvement in your aerial control over the next few weeks. My final training item when it comes to improving your aerial control is to aerial toward the wall on the field. Now, what you wanna do is aim your car face down for an easy descent as you drive down the wall. There are two reasons why we're doing this. The first is to work on the finite movements of controlling an aerial to position your car ready for the next play. The second, is to always be landing on your wheels. And usually, it's best to position and face your car downwards for the quickest recovery. So there we have it. These are some ways that you can improve your aerial control in Rocket League. I'd say it'll take a good few hundred hours before you actually see any progress with your aerial control. But one key bit of advice I wanna give you and remind you of is to stick to it. I promise you, the more time you spend improving your aerial control in the earlier stages of playing the game, the better off you'll be in the future and probably at a higher rank than what I am at the moment too. Even something as little as 10 minutes per day can really have an exponential effect in the long term. If you're looking for five tips to improve your Rocket League gameplay, why not click this video here? I'm Jack and I'll see you next video. Catch ya.